What is it that separates the definition of upper bound from the definition of maximum for a set of real numbers? What would you say the connection is, Bridget? The upper bound doesn't have to be included. That's right. So when the upper bound is included in the set, then we call it the maximum. So there's a, a connection which belongs to E. So an upper bound for E which belongs to E, which is an element of E, becomes a maximum. Uh, okay, then what's the connection between upper bound and supremum? So between this, this pair of definitions. Yeah? It's the least. Yes, which is least among all possible. Which is least among all upper bounds. So that upper bound, which is lesser than or equal to all other upper bounds, is what we call the supremum. Um, and so that same structure, if we take it and move it from the realm of upper bounds into the realm of lower bounds instead, uh, will get us a set of definitions that work for uh, minimum and also for infimum. So if we just take that and we just slide it straight down a notch, right, then a lower bound for a set E, which also happens to belong to E, will be called the minimum of that set. Um, and th there's only one other thing we have to change here uh, to get the definition of infimum. Um, what else do I have to change on this picture to understand the connection between lower bound and infimum? Greatest. Right. We just need to change the word least here to greatest. Um, so let me ask real quickly, why, why do we need to make that change? Why is it better to ask what is the greatest among all, uh, I guess I need to change the word upper here to lower also. Um, why does it make sense that the infimum should be defined as the greatest of all lower bounds instead of the least of all lower bounds? So if I look at the set, which is the closed interval from 0 to 3, and I ask, um, what's an example of a lower bound, or maybe on the, in the case of the group assignment, is negative 1 a lower bound for s? How did you answer that question? Yes or no? Yes. So negative 1, right here, is a lower bound for s because, what's the definition for lower bound? I know that the negative 1 is a lower bound because there does not exist, I'm going to sort of write an existent sign with a, with a slash through it. There does not exist an element of E, let's call it X, such that X is less than negative 1. Right? There are no elements of the set E which are to the left of negative 1 on the number line. Um, what's another way to say that affirmatively instead of negatively? What's a, a synonymous way of defining lower bound that instead of using does not exist, uses an affirmative statement? Yes, right. So the way to say that affirmatively is that all elements of the set E are greater than or equal to negative 1. And any time we're, we're making a statement and assertion of claim, it's best to make it affirmatively if we can because that gives us something to work with if we're going to use that in a proof, right? If I'm going to try to use this statement in a proof, it doesn't really give me an element to work with. It tells me that no elements of the set are less than negative 1. And I can't really do much with that. Right? But the affirmative version tells me that if I start my proof by saying, let x be an element of e, then this definition is going to tell me that I know something about that element x, right? because all elements of e are greater than or equal to negative 1. This is very carefully worded. Negative 1 is a lower bound for s, because there may be others. Give me another example of a lower bound for s. Negative 2 is also a lower bound for e, rather. Uh, I, I wrote it as e. It should be s. Um, so why does it not make sense, coming back to the question, why does it not make sense for us to want to define the least lower bound for s? The infimum of a set, the greatest possible lower bound, what would the infimum for this set be? What's the lower bound for this set which cannot be made any larger? Maybe another way to say that. What's the greatest of all possible lower bounds for e? Zero. Zero. So right there is the infimum. Zero is, in fact, a lower bound for the set. Again, coming back to the definition. Because we can say that, on the one hand, there does not exist any element of the set which is less than zero. 
On the other hand, we can say affirmatively that all elements of E are greater than or equal to zero. That means that zero is a lower bound. But then any other lower bound that we can write down must necessarily be less than zero. Because what if we try to take uh, a lower bound which is greater? How would I know, for example, that, I don't know, one is not a lower bound? It's not a lower bound for E. Why? So how would I show that this statement were false if one were in that spot? What's the negative version, or what's the, sorry, the negation of this claim? If we want to show that this statement is false, what statement do we have to prove true? There exists an x. There exists an x in the set <laughs> such that x is less than 1. x is less than 1. So that's the negation. I'm going to put a little negation symbol uh, in between those two, right? So one or the other of the green statement or the purple statement must be true. So if we want to prove that the green statement is not true, the only way to do that is to prove that the purple statement is. Right? So if I want to show the purple statement is true, I just need to show that there exists an x in the set with x less than 1. How do I show that there exists an element of this set which is less than 1? What's one way of doing it? Shortest proof in, maybe in our whole class. How do I prove that there exists an element of this set E which is less than 1? What we're really called upon to do here is provide a counterexample, right? Because the, the, the statement in green is universal claim. All elements in this set are greater than or equal to 1. And it only takes one bad apple to spoil that bunch, one counterexample. That's what, that's what an existence statement like the statement in purple is asking for us to find. So as you said, the element x equals 0 is an element of E. We can see that by the definition of the set. But 0 is less than 1. I shouldn't say but, because we're proving the purple statement true. So and. <laughs> x equals 0 is an element of the set, and 0 is less than 1. Therefore, the purple statement is true. And therefore, 1 is not a lower bound for the set. Any number which is greater than 0 is not a lower bound for the set. And that means that 0 must be the greatest lower bound, because it is a lower bound, but anything which is larger cannot be a lower bound for the set. And that makes 0 the infimum. Um, and the infimum needs to be the greatest lower bound for a set, rather than the smallest lower bound or the least lower bound, because there is any lower bound can always be made smaller, can be made lesser. right? Negative 1 is a lower bound, but then therefore so is negative 2, so is negative 3, so is everything to the left of those numbers on the number line. And so to say the least lower bound, that's always going to escape out to negative infinity if there is any lower bound, any finite lower bound at all. And so greatest lower bound is the only thing that makes sense as a, as a unique definition, right? That only has one way of defining it uh, for any given set which has a lower bound, which is bounded from below. Wow, okay, yeah. So if that's the source of the... Of the of the confusion. That is completely my mistake. Um, and I apologize. So the definition of infimum is that the infimum of a set is not the greatest of all upper bounds. Because just like we were talking about a minute ago, the greatest of all upper bounds for any set which is bounded from above, that would always escape out to infinity. Right? You can always make any upper bound for a set greater and have another upper bound. Um, so infimum must be the greatest of all lower bounds. I get in trouble with copy-paste. Um, maybe more often than I ought to. Uh, I think what I had done is I had copied the definition of supremum down and adjusted a couple of the words, uh, but I just didn't get them all. So, yeah, my mistake. Uh, the infimum is the greatest of all lower bounds.